Well, today we are back in the Japanese garden for our first comparison video of the year. We have Gregoire with us again. We have Hello. two fantastic nakeds. The bikes, not Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and today, basically, we're going to be taking bike, both these bikes out on the road, giving them a good bit of hooning and trying to decide really which one's best. I mean, that's, that's the target of this video, isn't yeah. it? The Triumph's obviously new to the market for this year. It's the first time we've ridden it today. I've been riding the Toronto for the last week, so I do know that bike a little bit better. But how do these two stack up? Is the Triumph the new daddy of the super, super naked scene, or is the Toronto still the top dog? Definitely. Let's roll the intro. So first of all, I've got to say a massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for lending us a Tuona. So I've had this for about a week. It's been a fantastic week. I've only nearly lost my license about three times and died about five times. So it's been, it's been really good. So massive thanks to Wheels. Check them out in the links below. And a big thank you to Triumph for lending me the uh, OAS, the Speed Triple as well, and adding Greg to their insurance so you could ride it. They certainly did, yeah, which was very nice of them actually. And thanks for having me back. No, that's very, fine. Very You're pleased. very welcome. It's been, the weather been so bad. Oh, this it's is like the first opportunity to actually do a review. It's exactly it, isn't it? This is why we're so late actually bringing one of these through. And it's actually just started raining now. Yeah. So <laughs> if we're sat here soaking wet in the rain, it's like the only opportunity to do it because the weather's been it's so right, shite. Right, so my first ever try on the Speed RS. You've tried that Tuono before briefly, Greg, haven't you? I have. I've ridden it for, not for long though, only for about 15 minutes. Sounds uh, very, very racy. Let's have a bit of yours, let's have a bit of yours. Oh, that sounds, that sounds gorgeous. very racy. This sounds a bit racy, that sounds very racy. The riding position is quite different. The bars are a bit higher on this. Yeah, this, I agree with you. This feels more like, um, like a sports bike riding position, but in comparison. But nothing, you know, nowhere near as low as a clip-ons, but it's quite upright that, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think the Aprilia, the seat is feels high and you're sort of pushed down towards the tank a little bit. So I think your bum's in the air a little bit more on that. I think I'm definitely, my back is sort of more upright on this and the bars are a little bit higher and wider perhaps on this. I'm not sure, having just ridden the Triumph just for 15 minutes, that the seat, I find it that comfy actually. The, Apri the Aprilia seat's a bit wider, isn't it? I think it's a bit thinner, this. It is, isn't it? There's more arse cheek hanging over the edge of the seat in my case. <laughs> The Triumph's not uncomfortable, but it's just not as comfortable oh, hey. as the British. You right? Yeah, a little, 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 came up a little bit over the, over the crest there. I didn't mean to, it's all accidental. <laughs> so performance of the bikes, I mean, they're both incredible from a performance you mean power point of view. Or, or just everything. performance, yeah. Well, no, we're talking not handling, we're talking power and power. speed. Yeah, we're, okay. we're talking power and speed. So they're both very, very good. The yeah. Triumph, the Triumph has less mid-range torque than the Aprilia and when you jump off the Aprilia yeah. you notice it you open and, it up it takes a little while to get going doesn't you it? Get on the Aprilia, oh my god the mid-range is just incredible it's right there but then within 30 seconds of riding the Triumph you then forget the Aprilia yeah. and you realize that the Triumph also has a very very strong mid-range yeah and it just builds and goes and it's 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 lovely the I, power on both is lovely yeah. I think if we were comparing it to anything else apart from that or maybe the Super Duke is the other Correct. exception. You would think it had loads of grunt in the mid-range. It has got loads of grunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah it has got loads of grunt. If we were up grunt. against a GSX-S or the S1000R, you'll be like, it's so it's much a, more grunty than yeah, those bikes. Yeah. But compared to, the, compared to this, which is yeah. just a beast. Yeah, that suspension, this is definitely the more nimble bike out of the two, without question. My goodness, the Aprilia is gorgeous! <laughs> oh, it pops and bangs as well. Oh, this is agile. This is really, really agile. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Lovely in the twisties. The Triumph is lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's really agile, this. She's beautiful. Handling. They're quite different. So again, 
sounds a bit weird, they both handle brilliantly. But I think that the Triumph feels a lot more flickable than the Aprilia. Yeah, it's the weight, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's that 15 kilos yeah. weight. It, really it, flickable, really instant. Um, you know, it feels more like my KTM 890, I would yeah. say, uh, you know, which I obviously ride all the time. The Aprilia feels more sports bike esque. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you can tell that this is. Uh, the RS34 with some high bars on it, can't you? you really can. It feels like the wheels weigh twice as much as they mm. do. You know, just changing direction, you, it, it takes a little bit more effort. It, it feels really stable, doesn't it? Really it stable, feels really brilliant. solid, really yeah, stable. Mid corner, it's lovely. You can get on yeah. the power hard, and yeah. it all feels fantastic. But that you just you literally can flip from side yeah. to side instantly. Yeah. Uh, whereas, on, as you said, the Aprilia, it takes just a bit more of a heave, a bit more of a heave, a bit more yeah. of a heave. The front end on the Triumph is a little bit skittish, I'd say. Keeps things exciting. <laughs> it, it does jump around a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that, but I know what you mean. It's engaging. <laughs> it is. It's not as stable as, as the Toronto front end. For me, the Aprilia just, I mean, it hasn't changed massively, has it, from last year's model, 2021. Fairing's slightly different, headlights are different, but a few electronic tweaks. Electronics, electronics and styling yeah, is and the big styling. change, isn't it? And it's very good, isn't it? Very good. It rides well. It's engaging. It's got that fantastic noise. The suspension on it is very comfortable. It's versatile. It's comfortable. It's obviously rapid. There's no denying it's rapid. Has a few little niggles. I think we both mm. agreed, aren't we? Yeah. I don't think they're showstoppers. No. But they could be things that start to annoy you and grate on you if you own one, maybe over time. And my worry with it is some of those niggles feel like mechanically you're not looking after it very well. And if you owned it, that would certainly bother me a little bit. So then you'd have to yeah. ride round those to try and protect the bike. And, you know, things like the gearbox, you know, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not perfect, is it's, it? It's the quick shifter and the blipper, isn't it? It's now, unfortunately, I don't have the manual for it because some people have said in the manual, it says you can't use it below a certain rev range on some it's bikes, which could be the case because you're right. When you put it in, sometimes you're like... It doesn't oh, feel nice, does it? Yeah. You, you, yeah, if you're mechanically sympathetic, which yeah. we are, I certainly am, it feels a bit... Oh. And also, I think, if you don't use the quick shifter or blipper, it's still sometimes not that smooth, yeah. is it? So Even on the clutch. Exactly. So the only way to ride around it is to obviously do that, and then it's still a few little niggles. Yeah. But again, we're splitting hairs, yeah. and actually the overarching view on both of them was they're both very, very good. I mean, this bike is lighter, isn't it? I think it's what you say. I think it's about 195 kilos wet, isn't it, this? Whereas the Tuono is like 210. So this, is, this feels lighter than the Tuono, without question. It turns in faster. It's quicker steering. It's just more nimble, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely a bit more nimble. Suspension is Ooh. firm, but I wouldn't say over firm. Well, it depends what you want to do with the bike, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. If you want it as your daily commuter, then Matt, yeah, it could get on your nerves a little bit. The Triumph's at least, was it? It's about 15 kilos lighter than yeah. the Tuono. Yeah. And you can feel that, can't you? It's very flickable. The, the whole chassis is, is tauter. It's, it's more flickable than the Aprilia by some margin. Yeah, I would the say. The Aprilia's fast flowing, and don't get me wrong, it handles well. But when you jump on the Triumph, it feels like really quick steering and you can throw it in and it's, it feels nimble. It feels like it's a small bike physically and it feels yeah. shorter wheelbase and it, it, it it's it's lively the handling it feels isn't it? very similar to the street triple doesn't it it, does. it feels very similar it may be a little bit more sporty than the street triple it's more perhaps. it's sportier i yeah. i remember on the street triple rs which we rode last year there's a bit of flex yeah in yeah the it is, it, there's a yeah. bit of this doesn't it there's none of that no, on the it's, it's much stiffer it, it's, isn't it? it's much much stiffer yeah. and you know i mean it just feels really taut yeah you can, you can tell yeah, and i'm not just talking about the suspension the chassis everything, everything. feels yeah. really really taut yeah. on the aprilia there's it's a little bit loose and yeah and they're, they're the differences you and, can and tell again, then it's into a preference thing yeah. because some people probably it depends what not, sort of riding you do it, doesn't it it depends on your riding exactly yeah. so they, they, it's not a good or bad thing it, it just to trying to describe what it's like yeah but i think overall on the positive side we talked about niggles it feels beautifully engineered the triumph yeah i think they I spent a lot of time developing that suspension developing the yeah. chassis getting it to to handle you yeah. know to be the, the ultimate super naked in their in their view you know and, and it is a performance motorcycle you're not buying it to get, you get your shopping on you know no, no. it's a performance bike, and that's what they've built they've, yeah. they've tuned it and they've built it yeah. for p power speed yeah. and handling yeah. <laughs> i gotta say 
This Tiona, Tiona is decent. It's decent? Oh, it's <laughs> very, very decent. Because you've always been a bit critical of it yeah, when you've tried that in the past. I have. I've always loved the RSV4, but I've always, I've never quite gelled with the Tiono, but I've got to say, I'm feeling like I might have been a bit of an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about electronics, top of the range, nakeds, you know, all the latest, the big overhaul on the Tiono this year for electronics. Obviously, they're all new on the RS as well. Um, Sort of things like, on, I think on a naked wheelie control is a big one, isn't it? I mean, yeah. obviously the traction works with what we've seen on the road. You know, you need to be on the track really to, to push the limits of the traction control. But what we've seen today, the wheelie control on the Torono is good. What I love about the electronics on the Torono is you've got that user mode, which you can turn off wheelie control, but leave the traction control on. And you can have that on your individual setting, they call it. And that means you can just pop into that. You know the wheelie control's off. You haven't got it. It doesn't reset when you start the bike on and off. It's just there. Yeah. Really well, I think the electronics on the Aprilia are really good. Yeah. The traction light on some of the roads we were on earlier was flashing. Flashing away. But it wasn't at all intrusive. Yeah. It was lovely. You got a bit of front wheel lift at, when we were off road. Um, <laughs> bit, um, I think they work really well. And also, just, I, I, you know, I don't know the electronics on it well to use. And yeah. you were saying change the mode. It's so easy to yeah, find it. It's, 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 it's quite it's, intuitive. It's, it's, it's really clear set on, it the, on the, on the yeah. TFT display. It, it's it's yeah. decent. I really, really liked it. it it's easy to swap. You know, it remembers. And I think. With the Triumph, they're still good. You know, the, wheelie, the wheelie control is actually very good when Brilliant. it's on. It's actually better than I think. You can adjust it on the on the Torone, and you can have yeah. different levels of wheelie control. But it's always been like that. It it will interfere very quickly Straight when the away. wheel comes up, and it cuts it. Doesn't it, it cuts it. Yeah, it, it cuts it. Whereas on on the That's RS, right. it would actually come up. Yeah, like that and before it, beans, it would do anything. And it lets it come up, so and it's really nice and controlled. And as it shuts off, it doesn't it, cut it. No, it, it just slowly just lowers the wheel, really doesn't nice, it? Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it very is. progressive. Yeah, and I you agree. can have some fun on it without feeling like you need to turn the, no. the traction, the wheelie control off. But the wheelie yeah. control is tied in with the traction control. You can't yeah. separate it, which is a shame. I would love to have seen them. Be, it's a shame on a super yeah. naked, isn't it? It is because you want the traction and you want to have a little bit of yeah. fun. It is a bit of a strange decision, I think, to, I think to do so. that. Yeah. Um, and also, when you turn it all off, does it lose your settings? Yeah, then you have to go in and turn it off every time you start it. Exactly, which so, is also another yeah. bit of a pain, isn't yeah, it, I think, to be is. honest with you. So, so that's, that's how they work, and it does let you wheelie, it's great, but there's no option to turn off that wheelie control. And some people, that, that they would never mess with that, and that wouldn't yeah. bother them. But if you do like to do a few little uh, naughty wheelies, yeah. then um, just bear that in mind. Yeah. The only thing with the Tuono, in, in my view, it's a little bit too much for the road. You've, you've got to have a a lot of self-control. I went out the other day on this just to ride it, just for a little cruise around. Just thought, I'll go out, I'll see if I can ride it slowly. Which uh, way, mate? Go right, go right, yeah, go right. I thought, I'll, I'll go out, see if I can ride it slowly. And, and, I and you on the super, Yeah, on, when I bought the Super Duke, I did that, and you could go out, you could ride it slowly. You go out on this, you can ride it slowly 15 minutes or so. <laughs> and, yeah, then and then you, and just, you just start build, yeah. building speed. And that's because it doesn't ride very nicely slowly as well. The quick shifter and blipper are, are clunky when you're going slow. And you know, you've got that little bit of lash, a little bit of chain lash, which we've, we've spoken about before. Yeah. And it, it, just, it just wants to be ridden from mid range and above this thing. And it is quite hard to keep it under control. No, I know exactly what you mean. I think the Triumph, the beauty of it is, you know, just here I'm doing 28 miles an hour. The fueling's nice, I'm in sport mode. It's so civilized, so easy. The gearbox is really nice. You know, I'd imagine that the um, this Triumph is more aligned to the S1000R, the new one, in terms of slow speed road manners, whereas that Tiono, as you say, is it's all about hoonage, isn't it, really? Let's talk a little bit about the quality. Obviously, these are both top-end motorcycles, 15-1 for the RS. 18 one yeah. for the Aprilia so you're expecting there you know, to be the best possible quality available basically yeah. I think that the RS has it slightly on quality I think the overall fit and finish of the bike is at a really high standard yeah. there's no there's nothing I can pick out on it where you think mm, that that is you know that could be a little bit nicer and, that, and that's the point isn't it there, there's yeah. nothing we had a good look over the bike yeah and it top to bottom it all just feels brilliant quality it, it is good carbon quality. mud guard as well carbon which is really guard, nice is, touch yeah, it is it, 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 and it, everything switch gear it's all just yeah the really, plastics really nice. are all high the quality where the paint job seems lovely 
Definitely. There's even a bit of sparkle in the frame paint as well. In the sun, there's a bit of sparkle on yeah, the frame. In the frame yes. Yeah, all the fixings and fasteners are really nice. Yeah. Torono is also very nice. I love the aluminium frame on the Torono. Me too. I, I, I love that. I love that look. I wish more manufacturers yeah. went aluminium frame. I think it's really good. Yeah, definitely. But there's not one piece of carbon fibre on this bike. Plastic mud guard. Which I think is surprising, surprising for the factory model. Yeah, normally you get a little no, bit a of little splattering bit of carbon. carbon. Uh, yeah, exactly. So a little bit disappointing. Yeah. The red seat. I'm not sure about the red seat. It's already got quite dirty and it's quite hard to clean yeah, once it okay. gets mucky. But it's not, so, that's not a quality consideration. No, it's not a quality issue, That's just a yeah, personal it's, thing, it's, isn't exactly. it? It is, yeah. It is. So, yeah, I think when you're really getting a move on on the Aprilia, you're going to see the skid marks on that red seat. <laughs> you will. You don't want to shit yourself on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you're quite likely you would do. You may well do. You may well do. So we're saying then, quality was it fit and finish and quality? Quality, fit and finish and quality. We both agreed the Triumph, Triumph has got the edge. Yeah, Triumph's yeah. got the edge on the quality. It's got a lovely induction roar, isn't it? Like, a bit like the uh, the street triple, that same noise. The speed doesn't seem to have quite the same amount of mid-range as that Tuono though. That Tuono just is rampant in the middle. The initial shove on that is incredible, isn't it? The Tuono is just instant, isn't it? Yeah. And. Um, it's definitely more of an event, I think. Because the, the Triumph, it is quite muted, isn't it? it? It needs a bit more noise. Yeah, it definitely needs a bit. It's more airbox noise than actually exhaust noise on it, isn't it? <laughs> Where I think that's the opposite. There's more exhaust noise and less less induction noise. I mean, that engine on that bike is just incredible. I mean, it is. I mean, the engine. On, I just jumped on this. It's hard to say. I mean, this engine is obviously incredible as well. You know, Triumph have developed this, and it's. A, Amazing power plant and everything, but just that V4 sound and Agreed. power delivery takes some beating. Now well, this does sound rather nice. Undeniably a triple, isn't it? It's got that. It's definitely got that triple wind to it. The Aprilia wins on the sound, I think, for me, because it, as always, whenever we talk about Aprilia's, the sound's phenomenal, and it's still no different on that yeah. latest Tiono. You know, it's got the valve in the exhaust, isn't it? As soon as you get on the boil, it opens. It's actually quite loud in stock form yeah, it is, in relative yeah. terms. And in a good way, it sounds lovely. The Triumph is very quiet. More induction roar than exhaust note. I don't think there's any noise out of the exhaust, to be honest with no, you. It's really, not. really quiet. Yeah, even on the flybys coming past, you couldn't really hear the exhaust, could you? You could hear the induction roar, but yeah, not, not, not the exhaust, exhaust so much. So, but having said that, for a very quiet bike in stock form, mechanically, there's no rattles, it sounds nice. Yeah, it does, yeah. It does. You know, That's a good does, point, yeah. yeah. Doesn't it? It does yeah, sound very yeah, nice. Personally, if I bought either of these, I'd put I'd want to put a pipe on them anyway. I know not everyone does. I think the Triumph with a pipe yeah, will sound, sound I can't will wait sound to hear one. Talk a little bit about desirability, Italian, exotica, English muscle. <laughs> and I think they're both they're both really desirable, aren't they? They're both. I mean, they both got all the Gucci bits on. Now yeah. they're both the Brembas Bass obviously got Stylemas on the RS. This has got the M50s, but it's got they've all got all the componentry. They've both uh, got a nice bit of bling. Yeah, they've both got a nice bit of bling. I don't think there's much between them really from the desirability no. point of view. I, I I'd agree. I think the only um, the only thing I would say is that the colours are a little bit muted on the Triumph again. Yeah, but I quite—I know a lot of people. Could, I do quite like that grey. They're a bit muted. They are a bit muted. Yeah, they don't go loud. So I think no. that you know, if you want a bit more flamboyant, the Aprilia is a little bit more flamboyant. I think yeah. I think the Triumph's a little bit conservative. I would um, agree. Yeah, so that may affect desirability. You know, a Lamborghini is desirable. They're quite flamboyant, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. I, I wouldn't say. That the, I wouldn't that. say the Triumph's flamboyant. It's not a Lamborghini, it, but is it has it? got Olins and it does look premium and yeah. it, it, it's very, very nice. You know, if, if they did it in red, a Ducati yeah, red, could it would, you it, it would look as desirable be. as the Street Fighter, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. Do you not agree? Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. So, um, it's, I, I can't pick it on desirability. No. I think they're both very desirable. They're both premium products. They ooze top end. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, look at the uh, Aprilia. It's got a red seat, for heaven's sake. You can't get much more flamboyant than that, can yeah, you? Exactly. Match your knickers, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not after you shit yourself. <laughs> right, I'm now in road. 
I like that, the dash goes back automatically after you've changed it and, and, and hit enter. Yeah, it feels a, bit, feels a bit softer now, the throttle. The Tuono is, I put it in tour mode now, because this has got the electronic O-Lins, it softens all the suspension off as well, so you get a much more comfortable ride. And it definitely it softens off all the throttle response as well. So you have to give it a bit more, but it's still a little bit on and off with that lash, you know, really low down the rev range. But it is, it is a bit better. I'll tell you, there's just one thing I'm thinking about on this though, on the Triumph. It's, 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 it's really hard to fault. I can't actually fault it. It's brilliant. I'm just wondering whether in the real world it's actually 50% better than the Street Triple RS, which is 10 grand versus 15 grand. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, that's a whole other comparison review that you're talking about. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is. And, you know, you could do back to back. And I think if you jumped off and on each of them, then you'd go, oh, the Street Feels you know a bit underpowered by comparison but that's also an incredible bike yeah no agreed you know and that's not to take anything away from this i'm just you know, just thinking, a little swap Let's yeah there's swap. definitely swap i gotta say liking it yeah I really it's brilliant value 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 is the last one on the list i mean as you said 18 18 one it's a lot of money is it on the road Oh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. There's probably okay. some on the road on top. And 15 one, but not on the road again. You're going to okay. have some on the road. So, so right, just 18 one. So three thousand. Three grand in it. Three grand in it. Yeah. You've got electronic suspension on this. You've got conventional owners on that. But I think 15 one, when you compare that to the competition with a bike with that spec and the, you know the Stylemas, the Olins, I think 15 one is actually pretty reasonable. Well, I think it is as well. well. I guess the only other bike that this is close to price bracket. Is the BMW S thousand R the new yeah, one? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which I think is probably a little bit cheaper with the same spec in terms. I think of, it's about fourteen. If the similar spec with cruise control and, I mean, and cruise all that control sort of stuff, yeah. And um, blipper and yeah, quick exactly. Shift and, fourteen. And, so that's so a grand that, cheaper. So, so it's a grand cheaper for the BMW, but you don't get Olins. You've got no Gucci bits. No Gucci bits. I know the suspension on the BMW is good. Yeah. But it's not bling is it yeah no so i think the value of the triumph yeah. in my mind the pricing is bang on well it's sort and, of and super duke money is it it's, it's, it's cheaper it's cheaper than super, the super duke's 15 7 yeah with the quick shift and, and, then, no, and that's extra oh then really? you have to buy the tech pack on top oh really and i think the tech pack's about 800 pounds now right seven eight hundred pounds mm. so so the the triumph is is considerably cheaper yeah, than the super duke the, well not considerably cheaper but probably over a thousand pound cheaper yeah Right. Um, so I think the Triumph, I think they've priced it well. I think the fact they've only done the RS model in my mind makes perfect sense. You know, if you're going to buy a bike like this, you want yeah. it to have all the bells and whistles. It's got it. Oh, yeah. Equally, the Aprilia comes with everything. It for does. The price. Yeah. But it's three grand more. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then I guess the only point that's potentially true is some dealers sell the Aprilias for less than list. Yes. Well, Wheels Motorcycles, our, our, uh, our sponsor for the video, you know, these... At the end of the well, you can't guarantee it, but what has happened for the last few historically, end of the, yeah. end of the season, you know, the used stock, not the used stock, but the new stock which hasn't sold, can be discounted. Can be discounted, yeah, and quite substantially. Substantially discounted. So, yeah, keep checking on the keep wheels. So that, so, but, website. But I know it's no guarantee, but if in the event that that happens, then you're talking about almost comparable price yeah, points. Exactly, and yeah. one would imagine that the Triumph is going to be at list certainly for this year. Yeah, isn't it? Because I, I it's can't a new see model and they're not going to discount. discount. I, doubt, yeah. I doubt that very much. And also, but it could be the same for this. To be fair, it could be. And actually, I, I think it would be, in a way, a bit annoying if they discounted it too much. Because if you went out and bought one and mm. then they discounted it, that'd be pretty depressing. Wouldn't it, to be honest, <laughs> it would, yeah. yeah. In the first year that they've been launched. So, what's winning on value then? Well, I guess I, it's I, the I, Triumph. I think, isn't the, it? I think the Triumph wins on value because yeah. it's, it's cheaper and and they're you know they're both brilliant bikes and it's got everything you'd ever need as well. Yeah. The brakes on the Triumph are faultless so nice lovely feel right there it's so lovely they're very good on this as well but they're not quite sharp are they not got quite the same bite then they're pretty good but it's not at the same level because that's got the stylemas of course this has got the m50 so i think those stylema calipers are a big improvement on the m50s and a lot of it's down to pad material as well of course you can't find neutral easily on the triumph though it's uh it goes to second most of the time for me and you have to find it going down from second which is not a showstopper is it but it's a little bit annoying it's a bit irritating you think on a new bike they'd be able to sort that wouldn't you really for uh, for an aprilia which is sometimes like that it's actually pretty good on this we're not doing the point scoring like we did before but we're still going to have to make a choice of which one we would have 
with the keys, price, price off the table, so not price, but if I could hand you the keys to one of the bikes, which one would you have? And I know it's quite difficult because we've only really spent the afternoon with the RS, and I think it's one of those bikes which could grow on you more over time. Mm. It already has grown on Yeah, you. yeah, so I, it could be quite a difficult one, and I've been living with this for a week, so I know this quite well, and I've only mm. just been on that this afternoon, so. So we're talking about ownership now. Ownership, which one, which would, one would you? Would I buy? But didn't buy, no, which one would I, if I give you the keys to, which yeah, one would you okay. have? But yeah. so it's ownership, then, right, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll get your point. Oh, uh, it's a toughie. It's really, it's one of the toughest I think we've, oh, I, we've I, had. I think it is, normally I know. Um, I think, because I have to make a decision for the purpose of the review, I would pick the Triumph, but it's a really close call. And, but the reason I would pick it is because I think that it has virtually no niggles. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I would agree. Uh, and the Aprilia, albeit brilliant and amazing, and it is brilliant, they're both brilliant, it does have a number of niggles, none of which are showstoppers, but on the basis you're giving me the keys, I personally would prefer to have a bike with no niggles than a bike that has some niggles. So you're going, you're going yeah. Triumph. But as a final comment, I would genuinely be happy with both because they're both well, you, fantastic. It's, it's worth maybe pointing out that you never really liked the old Toronto very much, did you? And I think they have improved this. I think you, they've, really I think point, they've worked really on and improved some of those, really some of those niggles. I've never, yeah, I know they're really popular and you know, I don't want to criticise the Aprilia Tiona, but um, I think the new model um, is better and it's, uh, I liked it a load more than I've yeah. ever liked the Tiona before. Yeah. And it, they've really sorted it, they've really improved it and I really do like it. Yeah. Uh, and there's not a lot to complain about, no. uh, to be honest with you. So, um, but I think it's just, it's, the Triumph is just the winner for me because the build quality and the refinement is immaculate. Yeah, no, completely agree. I, I think I like the new style of the bike. Another reason I've never bought a Triumph because it's always a bit too small. Being a bigger guy, it's a little bit too small. I it's think a bit bigger, it looks the cowling a bit bigger now. Yeah, I think it's got a bit, look, in a, in a good way for me, I think it just looks a little bit more, mm. say the word bulky is not, not a good, no. good way to describe it's it. It's just physically a little bit bigger. It's just a little bit bigger. It's physically bigger. Yeah. And it looks bigger than the, the RS, doesn't Definitely. it? The RS looks, doesn't look that much bigger than the, than the street version, the to be perfectly honest. It's compact, isn't it? It's There's a no very other, compact I mean, it bike. It is compact. It really yeah. is, yeah. So, so you'd, which, which keys would you have? So uh, I, I think I'm with you, and I oh, would yeah. take the keys to the RS. For the, for the main reason being... I don't think I'd better keep my license on this. Really? That, that, so that's your <laughs> honestly, reason, yeah, you honestly, just, The self-restraint is just impossible. Yeah, I think it's just too yeah. easy to go fast on that bike. Yeah. I love what they've done with electronics and the wheelie control being able to turn all that off. I like the, the electronic suspension. You've yeah. got all that option. I do, I love it. I do yeah. love this thing. Yeah. But I think, for me, I think it's really, really close. It tough, but, isn't it? but I think I'd go for the yeah. RS. I think, but it is the hardest comparison yeah, that I've is. done in a very positive way because they are the, the Aprilia is loads better than the they're previous model. They're both up there, aren't they? They're both the bar's so high. They're both they're both amazing. I think the new Triumph is brilliant. I really, really, really like it. Yeah. You know, it, it's on my it would be on my short list of bikes to buy. Yeah. You know, when I replace my 890, yeah. you know, it's definitely going to be a contender. And um, we'll yeah, s we'll see how we stay tuned for a further review a further once review. once we've lived with the Triumph. Yeah, I'd like to do a few more miles yeah, on, on, yeah. on the Triumph. Um, you know, and I think it would be good to do a review against the BMW S thousand R maybe yeah. at some stage because in, in a lot of ways they're similar, aren't they? If you know what I mean. They're yeah. like refined and well engineered and yeah. you know what I mean, all of those things. Well we're gonna um, do reviews of all the super naked. Super so naked. we're gonna be the new GSXS. Perhaps the new yeah. GSXS versus the S thousand R because be they're both straight four, so yeah. Good comparison, yeah. And then perhaps the winner at the best of the straight fours versus the uh, yeah, yeah, versus the RS. And then also we've got to test the Super Duke again. We've, we've got, got to, Duke, we've got to bring the it's Super been, Duke. It's been a while in. since we've we've ridden that, isn't it? Yeah. But I think we, you know, when we were riding, we we're just chatting about the fact that all of those bikes you've just named, actually this year, they're all really, really good, aren't they? What a choice of Super Naked yeah. now. They're really good. Yeah. You know, even the GSX S thousand, which is That's definitely it. down in terms of some of the gadgetry it's still, it's still fantastic it's still yeah, a good it's bike a great isn't bike. it you know it's what i mean they've sorted bike. out the fueling and the little niggles yeah. that they had and it's still a good bike yeah. isn't it there's such a choice there's never brilliant. been a better choice Absolutely for super brilliant. naked so there we go guys thanks for watching as always and uh, stay tuned for a further review of the uh Toronto. that may be out yet may not be out yet not sure but there'll be a further review coming and a follow-up of the uh of the speed once i've finished playing with it <laughs> 
fingering it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. This Cheers. is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Yeah, I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! Whoa! Man! Oh, <laughs>